I'm Sir Flobogen Thunderhammer. And I'm Teflon Frosthammer. And I'm Cabbage Tidehammer. And this is Whack. If Ampguard Knighthood means anything, you can't knife a motherfucker and keep it. And the thing that people need to understand essentially about arts and sciences events is that your scores don't matter. You want a black phoenix or a white phoenix? Jeez, language, man. We're on a freaking podcast, for fuck's sake. Mind-blowing experience, right? Hello, everyone, and welcome to WACT, where we discuss topics important to the AmpGuard community at large and talk with interesting people from around the foam fighting world. This week, we finally got someone back on that we've been wanting to get back on for, ah, damn, I I think like a year now. I think that we were actually still under a year when you got on. Kodiak, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, welcome back. I think uh, um, if we go back through and do a count of like Kodiak, we should have that guy on again. There's at least like six or seven of them that I can think of <laughs> yeah, in right? recent memory. Um, thanks so much for coming back. Absolutely. I actually just managed uh, during the intro to get subscribed to your YouTube channel. So we'll plug that in the comments down below as well. Hey, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. If, if you have not watched Kodiak's show, uh, it's a blast. We've been on there before. It records on Wednesdays? Wednesdays at seven. Yep. Wednesdays at seven. And what time zone is that? Mountain. Seven Mountain Time. Everybody should go watch it. The live show is cool because you actually get to interact with the guests. You can chat and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah they modernize their thing unlike us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually going to start off with a really basic question, man, because uh, anyone that needs an introduction to Kodiak should go watch our earlier episode. He gave an awesome introduction there. How the hell have you been, man? And I, I can't complain. Um, Mundania kind of uh, switched gears. I'm, I'm a teacher now. Oh, nice. So uh, I'm, I'm on a full-time grind there. Um, I'm finding more small committees in Amcard to get into to try to <laughs> improve Dragon Spine and trying to keep busy with Kingdom of Kodiak. And we, we actually got to have our uh, end drain event in person and we're kind of like halfway shut down again. But um, I got to see five of my really good friends get master hoods from all the work they put in over the last few years. So it's, oh, uh, it's been a wild ride. Yeah. Yeah. That that's first awesome. event pack feels super good. I know. Mm-hmm. Speaking mm-hmm. of master hoods uh, from the last time you were on, there's a new, new scroll in the background. What's that? What's that about? Uh, yeah. So I don't know if you guys can read Gallifreyan, but uh, that, that says that I am now a master crown. Um, yeah, nice. Congrats. Yeah. Congrats, man. <laughs> Thank you. Well Thank earned. You. Absolutely. Yeah. Good stuff. And, and of course, all three of us can definitely read uh, Gallifrey. And- no, definitely not. <laughs> was, it, was it done by the, the lady who's on TikTok who's the, I think, I can't remember the name of it, but she was uh, she's like a DAG player who lives out of like a, a what is it called? A, a sprinter uh, van. No, not a sprinter van, but it's like an ambulance or, or something like oh, that. Right. She's supposed to be like the world's leading Gallifrey and writer. Yeah, or circular like Gallifrey yeah. or whatever. Uh, uh, no, um, this is uh, the monarch that took after me was still hat and oh. she was uh, she was working on this while I was still in office and uh, held off until the end of her reign. And uh, yeah, I, I was over at her house quite a few times and <laughs> was like, oh, what, what is the there's a lot of orange in that. That's <laughs> <laughs> me? Uh, so yeah, no, this is uh, still have Verde's work. Nice. Uh, ring, uh, still have Verde ring a bell. Um, she did a fantastic job. She always does. But Gallifreyan, the uh, the bear has a uh, anti possession tattoo on its <laughs> chest, like I do. Nice. Um, you know, it's and it's a bear, so it, fit, yeah. it hits all of my things. That's fantastic. That's awesome. That's awesome. Congratulations, man. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Oh. Uh, Speaking of Gallifreyan, you guys, did I tell you guys about this? I don't know if I posted it in the Discord or not. That, so. that Eve Online is doing a Doctor Who crossover event. Oh, no. no. Yeah, I'm going to shoot a TARDIS with missiles. I was <laughs> so excited about I'll it. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye. Yeah. It's good knowing you guys. <laughs> so, um, Dragonspine, you are in a similar position to where we are. We had one event where we got to come back and have it in person. We had a nighting there. It turned out to be one of our largest events ever. Um, where is Dragon Spine right now? You mentioned that you're kind of in this halfway uh, zone. How's the kingdom doing? Uh, well, so I think uh, of our nine parks, seven of seven of them are currently shut down. Um, talking to the members of Dragon Spine Las Cruces, it sounds like we're gonna stay shut down. Um, numbers are still in the red for as far as COVID goes, um, and. How weird. We also had a nighting at our one event and (laughs) it was one of the larger of, yeah. So 
Got to get them um, in while you can now. I mean, yeah, right, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, the the in-person stuff is unfortunate, but we are uh, finding finding things to stay busy with and, and reaching out to the community still. We're still doing fundraisers and all those crazy things. I know, Flo, you were part of you were part of a team at one point um, <laughs> yes uh so yeah I, I mean in person's not there right now but you know passion still is so awesome awesome good to hear have you what kind of things have you guys been doing uh in this in the online in, environment here do you have like ans nights online or what's going on there Okay. Well, so since this last little shutdown, it's been less or it's been less put together than we had done previously. We have um, haven't uh, started setting up any of the Discord like da- daily or weekly chats or anything like that. We're still doing challenges uh, from the region and the the champion as they put them out, and uh, still having like meetups for certain things. Like again, there's committees and stuff that are still running that. Uh, a lot of us are trying to participate in, but it's a lot uh, looser than it was when we went into COVID the first time. I think people um, after doing it for a year, were like, I don't want to do it again. I, yeah. I, I can't do it again. Yep. Yeah. You know? I feel that. There's this weird thing that's happening with, with AmpGuard in a, in a sort of post online thing where AmpGuard's become more decentralized. Um, and it's it's almost exactly matched like the rise of TikTok where it got really popular over the pandemic where like instead of going to specific locations, you now seek out the thing in AmpGuard that you want and then you find an avenue for it. And because most of AmpGuard's online right now, it's super easy to do that. So you can find like a crafting chat or a, a bardic night or whatever in like one of a hundred different discords. And yeah. part of me thinks that's really cool and I hope it continues after the pandemic. The other part of me just really wants to get back to regular AmpGuard. So like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a love-hate thing for me because I'm not, I don't love being online all the time anyway, but it, yeah. it's kind of cool to see people doing it. Yeah, no, it's it's super rough not being able to do what the game you love, right? But yeah, like um, I'm in the Nine Blades Discord because they were, they were pretty um, monumental in helping us through COVID helping us reeve, giving us classes, uh, coming out, you know, doing KOK episodes. Um, and we, they're busy. They're still busy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think they ever really came out of COVID. They kind of just were like, oh, we're going to be COVID light. So we're yeah. still going to have some restriction. Um, but uh, th- I know I know, I get messages on there all the time to, oh, hey, come to this so we can do this. And <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, uh we're we're similar in Winter's Edge at this point. We're like COVID light. Like parks can shut down, but we're not forcing them to. It's more of a like state and local mm-hmm. rulings kind of thing, which is mm-hmm. that's working out for most of our players. I feel like, but we're starting to hit some red numbers too. It's Tennessee in particular has been uh, kind of getting scary lately. It's never not <laughs> been red, which yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so I want to do. I want to back up a, a little bit because the last time we talked to you, mm-hmm. you were still the monarch of your kingdom, I believe. Or were, I or think would, so. Or I was just about to step down. I think. yeah, just about to step down a little bit. So, mm-hmm. what have you been up to? I, I know that you said that you were doing a lot of small committees and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What have you been up to since you stepped down? He's the what? monarch of the kingdom of Kodiak. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, army it? of one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should start a. You should start a high fantasy. Like, oh no! You, no, 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 no. Wow. Get all your paperwork <laughs> together and just be the kingdom of Kodiak. Yeah, I, I, mm, mm, maybe. Uh, so what have I been up to? Uh, so since we're not doing a whole lot of in-person stuff, I've got a coffer committee going for Dragon Spine. So we can start figuring out how a floating crown has coffers when it's been stagnant and came from a park for since its existence. Turns so out it's working, not easy. It sucks, it's not, actually. It's not easy and it sucks. So we're, we're doing that. Um, I'm, I volunteered my ponytail for a fundraiser, uh, again, uh, keeping KOK alive, but where I've been putting a lot of my RP energy between looking at going to Alliance LARP in Utah in February, um, I've just been working on my story for what Kodiak is, what is he doing? Because, uh, going into COVID, he was, you know, there was his possession through his sword and like, there's a whole bunch of drama. So I'm, you know, just getting the stories written, 
contacting people to make sure they're comfortable being in a story if i submit it as like a bardic or a um uh, entry cool. for quals so uh yeah mm-hmm. it's let me pause just one sec there. Are you actually writing out your character story? Like, is this something, is this done in a format that people could go read if they wanted to? If people, yeah, if you can get a hold of my crown call since I started playing the game, there is usually a journal entry. It's dated and it's from my perspective, it's from Kodiak's perspective of what's been going on with him in his time in Ampgard. That's really cool. And, yeah. Uh, we got to do something, you know, uh, <laughs> and it's, it's one of the things I, uh, a lot of people who come on KOK are like, well, I like RP, but I don't know how to get into it. And I'm like, may I suggest mm-hmm. you writing like four paragraphs about what your character is doing right now? It'll jump start it. I promise. God, my character perspective would be Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. <laughs> <laughs> be a diary. We're in calendar year three of a pandemic. It doesn't matter anymore. None of this matters anymore, Fry Man. <laughs> <laughs> like, it would just be nihilistic as fuck. Well, that's really cool. Uh, so, um, hopped on a, f- a couple of uh, committees. Uh, I've actually hopped on a few small committees as well while the pandemic's been going on stuff to look at our Kapora and see where things could be fixed and uh, something like that. If, uh, because we always try to take at least a small section of the show and talk to some of our new users about some things that they could do to stay involved. What does either starting or hopping onto a small committee look like? Well, so for us, um, I, I went, spoke to my monarch, be like, Hey, uh, it's, confirmed that our kingdom has no coffers uh i want to put a team together i will just ask for volunteers and i won't select hand select people so it doesn't seem biased so i went to the kingdom page and said hey i'm looking for volunteers uh to join this committee i would like to try to get one person from each park if i could um and we did a really great job of getting super close to doing that without having to pry or poke or beg people to join um And then I I spent most of COVID working on our Kapora. So I got really comfortable with <laughs> setting up uh, meetings like that and being like, hey, guys, like this is obje- the objective of this coffer team. This is what we're doing. This is what we're not doing. We need to make sure that people are aware that we are not doing certain things, but we are trying to do these things. And with our stated goal, how do we get to that? Uh, putting surveys together making sure the verbiage of the surveys are really tight because that always becomes a problem when you're asking the populist questions is like, if it's a vague or, or could be misinterpreted Mm -hmm. question, you get bad data. Um, So we've spent a lot of energy doing that. And then, uh, you know, reaching out to the people who are, we have a couple of brand new people in kingdom office. Oh, so wow, reaching awesome. out to them and being like, hey, you're the current regent, Freya, and you've never done Kingdom Office before. And now you're also raising your hand for uh, uh, this committee. This is what it's going to look like. This is how the work is going to be. Are you ready? And Freya has grabbed the entire group and just pulled us to like, yeah, not only am I ready, but you should be ready faster. Okay. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, that, I wish we could harness that newbie energy in like a bottle like it yeah, you sure they don't, they don't need to move in the Winter's Edge area or anything? Like yeah, that. if they need to relocate to Knoxville, <laughs> like, it's a hot town, you know? Well, so this is a really cool transition that you go through, too, uh, that uh, I uh, got belted before Master Crown existed, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I was either one of or the last person to get belted before the new system was implemented. The... Uh, but now that you have a masterhood for leadership as well, um, it's kind of cool that you get tossed into this position where uh, you have these people coming to you. And this never goes away, right? This is going to be a thing from now on. But mm-hmm. uh, you're able to affect you know, positive, meaningful change uh, to people. that you, You've always been able to do this. You didn't need a masterhood to be able to do it. And I'm sure that people came and talked to you before. I think we mentioned that a little bit on the, the show that you had done before, that people had already started coming to you. Mm-hmm. But um, it it's cool to get the uh, to be able to begin. Uh, I won't uh, lifting up. I guess is the best way to put it. The people that are coming up, those those new faces that are really excited. Uh, I I got to tell you, 
that's really what keeps me going at this point. If I didn't have those people that were super excited to hop into the roles and, you know, had so many questions and things like that, I don't know if I'd be able to keep going with the, with leadership in the game. It, it revitalizes you. Absolutely. And uh, we did talk a a little bit about how that worked when I was in office and I went out of my way to try to like pick people Mm -hmm. for offices because like they hadn't done it before, but they, they had passion for the game. And I thought that I had enough know-how to be able to show them what would be a good way to lead. And like, still had was my regent. She became the monarch. And now, you know, she's doing local offices again. And uh, Morgan was our champion, went to GMR. He's talking about nice. staying in office to be the monarch. Like, we, we that generation of um, AmCard leadership kind of spawned an, another set of generation, too. And now we're looking, now I'm re- two generations removed from the regent position. Still ha- had her different regent, and now Freya's in for Tajima. And I'm just like, wow, it, it was it was really easy to get everyone to jump on board about like, hey, I'm going to ask you to be my regent or I'm going to I want you to be my team and not just have five people who won elections come together. It was that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I like that. To to backtrack to something you'd said just a little bit ago, we recently interviewed Wonjo, um, and he also talked about how when surveying his, you know, surveying for the V nine stuff, they had to be super specific about how they ask the questions, um, because he's, you know, again, if you ask the wrong question, you can poison your pool of data and everything else. I absolutely appreciate the struggle you're you're having there. Yeah, this is an interesting conversation. Um, also, I think Flo laughed a little bit there because. Uh, you said something about a committee uh, and, and ending a up Kapora you know, committee. Yeah, rewriting the Kapora, and that's currently what he's doing. He's in a Kapora rewrite committee. Yeah. So I think most committees at some point. Oh God! Yeah. Fire a warning shot, dog. <laughs> I think it did. That was it. Sorry, guys. I was I forgot to turn on Woo. our light, and so I thought that I would blind all of my co-hosts. Yeah, I was staring right at it. Oh, <laughs> I knew it was. Oh, that's... <laughs> I got like men in black flashed. I don't remember what I was gonna say. Uh, oh, 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 yeah. Uh, so he was he was cracking up because you know Kapoor rewrite committees, but I think most committees that end up changing anything in your kingdom, especially as big as a, a coffer, um, you end up having to ask ask the question of like how much of the Kapoor am I going to have to fix to make this work? Because you know we don't have anything for that. So yeah, it, well it makes it really easy, right? Because like I I have the finished Kapoor that got turned into the kingdom on my computer. Mm-hmm. If I need to cross reference it, it's there. Mm-hmm. If I can. If I can give any advice, and I'm sure, Flo, you're already on top of this. You're wise beyond your years, and your years are even beyond your years. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry. It felt like last time I had to get some jokes. In. Absolutely. Uh, oh yeah. It, it's funny. Someone, one of our viewers, I don't remember whether this is on the air in our Discord, uh, said that we had the three of us had fallen into archetypes without realizing it. He said you were the pipe and slippers old man. Yep. I'm and, the funny guy. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember. Who, are you our? Are you our normal You're our guy? Every man, every yeah. man. Every man. Or Joe six pack or yeah. whatever. Every man? Okay. <laughs> well, what I was gonna, what I was gonna offer, uh, every man. I love it. Uh, if if you haven't broken your Kapora down to the sections and told your team we're gonna do this section, and when this section gets a thumbs up from our team. We're going to move to the next sec. Like, you should do that. That's exactly what we're doing right now. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Great we, job. That's we, awesome. So we shamelessly, shamelessly took Nine Blades Kapora mm-hmm. and used it as a base template and then have been making updates and changes off of that because there's quite a bit that Nine Blades does. Mm-hmm. Our, our principality was around for so long and then our kingdom has been around now where we got a lot of stuff in our uh, over the years, some of which is bad. Uh, that's very different <laughs> from what they did, but they had such a well put together Kapora that uh, that we decided to use it as a base, and then we did the exact same thing that you did. We started and broke that broke it down into sets of two sections, so section one, two, three, four, and then worked through all of that, worked through all of that, and every time we finish four uh, sections, we go back and read everything from top to bottom again, and go, is this still in line? Are we missing anything? So yeah, it's not fun work, but this is the most efficient way to get stuff done. It, I mean, if you if you got a team, I, one of the benefits to the coffer team that we had was those people reached out to me and said, "I want to do this." They were also my friends, so being waking up on a Saturday at eight o'clock in the morning to do 
two and a half hours of coffer before I would do discord to run, to do four hours on the kingdom Mm -hmm. before I would then get on for game night to keep, you know, like (laughs) at least I had my friends at the beginning going, Oh yeah, no, we could goof around a little bit, but like (laughs) they all knew when to turn it on. So yeah. Yeah. You know, it makes me curious because I, I, I mean, obviously we're doing it and you know, other, I've seen several other kingdoms doing it as well. How many kingdoms have taken the, the pandemic time that we have to like rewrite their Kaporas? Or to like look into rewriting their Kaporas because it's it's at least three or four that I know of, and that says a lot because I don't know that many kingdoms. So <laughs> yeah, if if you, if they're not doing it, at least looking at it to be like, mm, do we need to? This would be the would have been the perfect time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the pandemic brought up a lot of issues that we had no clue about because we weren't really prepared for a pandemic sh- surprise, right? So mm-hmm. like online formats being you know part of the Kapora or not part of the core if that's what they chose or whatever things like that are are now having to be addressed and i think that we're seeing a lot of core really right things of like that because you know what some of this stuff is dated <laughs> for lack a of lot better. of this yeah. stuff is dated um, yeah. a lot of our values have changed as a kingdom and things like that so i think a lot of people are likely looking at them yeah and it's not a bad idea yeah i hope that the online stuff sticks around too i hope that we are all able to, over the course of 2022, that things improve to a point where every kingdom is able to open all the way back up as mm-hmm. safely as they can. Local parks are meeting again everywhere and that the online stuff continues. Our uh, our group, our, our now duchy, has gotten a lot out of the online meetings. We do online ANS meetings. We do in-person ANS meetings. We get together and do movie nights. Um, we used to get together and do game nights and stuff too. We'd we'd play just some dumb game like, like a, Among Us or something like Among like Us. Or yeah, something Among like Us. That, yeah. Yep. Um, and God. it it brought out something that I don't think that uh, that was being paid attention to before, and that is mm-hmm. that your park. Well, it was being paid attention to, but not in the way that it should. Your park is just the community. We mm-hmm. always talked about building your community, making sure that people you know, feel included. We even talked about it when, when you were on the show last time yeah. that, and while we were talking about all of that, I don't think that it ever occurred to us how uh, big of a vehicle online could be discord yeah. or something like that could be for things like that. And that's something really positive that we got from the pandemic. Absolutely. And I, I probably would be reemphasizing this from the last time I was on, but we had a player in Southwest Arizona in Yuma mountains, Vells room as the park who went from, you know, three or four orders of the owl and over COVID and the extended COVID and then coming back for that one park day is now a master owl is probably going to be the next night in dragon spine. Oh, that's really fantastic. cool. And if there was, if anyone deserved it, but it took us being online to be able to see all of his work because he had a format to just, Hey guys, by the way, here's all of my stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, and also like, I think we, we lent a lot of, um, what am I trying to say here? A lot of, uh, a lot of credibility to the online format. Once it forced our hand, you know, once we were forced to say, okay, we're going to do this online. Now it's like, okay, this dude's profile on Facebook. Oh, this is good shit. Let's check it out. You know, let's look at it and see what he's doing. Um, where before it was like, oh, cool, he did that. He should really submit it to a Dragon Master. You know, and then you move yeah. on and you don't think about it. And it's like, no, we should always be considering that just because you haven't been able to, you know, have some judges give it a out of five. Like, it's still good work. Look at it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, we have, we've talked with leadership stuff uh, a lot uh, when, when you were on the show. I actually want to ask you a question that has nothing to do with your leadership stuff. Okay. When you were able to get back out and start playing again, Mm-hmm. what is the thing that you uh, want to do first? Or what have you missed the most? Maybe this is a better way to ask this. What have you missed the most about going uh, out and doing class battles? Is there is there okay. a favorite game or something like that that you want to do? Uh, I, I, whatever battle game I can get in, I love battle games. Um, again, I, because I spent a lot of COVID working on the story and making sure the story was where it was supposed to be. I was just starting to play monster and doing infernal descendant mm-hmm. to represent having a cursed weapon in my hand and fighting sword and board, like some kind of Neanderthal. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, having that be like 
my friends would be aware that that's different because I didn't, I, I just one day picked up the board and the sword and was like, Oh yeah, this is what I'm doing now. Uh-huh. And then they're like, Oh, something, something happened here. And it, I mean, it's improved my sword and board fighting. Like I, I've gotten way better doing it, but I, I want to play infernal descendant again because I want that story to, to finish so that I can go to wielding a two handed, I got a two handed ax um, Ooh, in my yeah. bedroom. <laughs> that's going to be my penance weapon for uh, hurting dragon spine. And I'm going to wear, try to find a mask <laughs> and I'm going to wear, and I'm just going to have a two handed ax and I don't know what class I'll play, but I'll figure it out. Wants to get one of our, uh, our local folks at park to play uh, in a, in a battle game we were running. I, I said I would just single sword heroic strike from World of Warcraft for every shot. Didn't matter what was happening. Like I would, so I'd run up to somebody single sword and then ah, and do the big spin all the way around. Killed and I some died. people. No, I well, yeah, okay. I killed a couple people. It was kind of <laughs> awesome, but it was just that for the entire time, just to get them to play. But it was worth it because we got more people in the battle game. Absolutely, games. absolutely. We we dedicated an entire tournament in Dragon's Fight Lost Crucis to wearing wigs and only throwing spin shots. Ah, uh-huh. oh, I'm in. Beyblade. <laughs> he had a blade. We uh, Lucas pushed people in this tournament, an actual kingdom level tournament that we were doing. No, it wasn't. the The reason I pushed for it is it wasn't a kingdom level tournament. So me and several other people who couldn't get anything at this Shire level. Oh, okay. Like there were some people that were taking it way too seriously, and I was like, "Hey, Chuck, Beyblade," and he goes, oh, "Beyblade." And then we got Heyo, and I was like, "Heyo, Beyblade," and he's like, oh, "Beyblade." So we got a bunch of us who weren't capable of earning any awards in this tournament anyway. We were just going to throw spin shots every time. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Chuck actually uh, uh, won that tournament throwing Awful nothing spin but shots. spin shots. Yeah, Wait, he's he's 12 feet tall, so yeah, exactly. it doesn't surprise me. The do you is there a, like a really big battle gaming culture in Dragon Spine? I uh, there is. It's just not in Dragon Spine Lost Cruises. <laughs> so, uh, so my home park used to be 50 people and was, you know, it was the big Dutch, one of the big duchies of the kingdom and people moved and people stopped playing. And when I was the local monarch, it was a duchy when it started. Uh, it was a barony when I finished and my first, my first reign as monarch, it was officially a shire. Um, well, our Kapora, our transition to the Floating Crown when it was completely finished, said that Dragon's Final Lost Crucis would become a Shire. So that was an une- it was an expected step, no matter what. But we had lost a lot of people. Yeah. So you come from a park where there's three or four Sword Knights, and now all the battle gamers are gone. No, it's I'm I know way too much about combat in like the tournament style than I would like to. Right. And I would rather be throwing ice balls and laughing at people. Yeah. Let me ask you kind of a tough question. Um, okay. Because this is something that our park noticed. We, we had a pretty big decline. Uh, this was a number of years ago. Do you think that yourself and other people in the park that began doing things on the kingdom level? Because usually it's not just one person. Usually you or your friends or a group of people or something say, hey, we're going to focus on trying to boost the kingdom up. Uh, do you think that that contributed to the slide of the park in some way? Uh, there was a, there is a correlation between the crown finally getting floated and the people who had to run a stagnant crown for, what, 20 years that were like, I'm going to, I'm gonna step away from the game for a minute here, and we those players that have had to step away for either like mundania reasons or personal reasons, or they were burnt out from having to keep the kingdom afloat, yeah, are trickling back in. But our our big loss was that, well, I mean, down here, the, our big loss was the wheel all grew up. The wheel gotcha. was 15 people strong, and then they all. Moved to Minnesota, moved to Santa Fe, moved to Albuquerque, uh, you know, retire in in some cases. And, I mean, that was a large chunk of our populace. Uh, Sir Alucard and uh, Dame Leela were, uh, well, Dame Leela has always been an Albuquerque knight, but uh, Sir Alucard used to be in Crucis, and then he moved to Albuquerque. Um, we are, 
our regular players that weren't high level awards kind of before COVID came, we're like, I don't want, this isn't the hobby I want on Saturdays anymore. And found different hobbies. Yeah. Um, I just came in at like a weird time because it was decreasing before I got there, but it really felt like it, I had my hand in, in <laughs> yeah. making it all fall apart. So. Yeah. I know that feeling. Yeah. And this, uh, uh, this in, in some part too was very much a, uh, COVID might've been the nail in the coffin uh, sort of thing. I think that a lot of groups have a story similar to that where they had some older or experienced players that once COVID hit and they weren't going to be able to go out and throw spell balls and swing foam and stuff, they just, they weren't down for hopping onto discord and, and doing stuff on there. It's unfortunate, but hopefully we can pull those people back in once we're able to start meeting well, again. I mean, also, yeah. like, circumstances and politics be damned. Sometimes people just have their own opinions about stuff and they don't want to play. You know, like, it's, yeah, it's th- true. those are people, you know, you can't blame yourself for those. Is, I guess the no, takeaway. but we got a positive out of it, right? Because mm-hmm. our, our old old guard, none of them are that old. I mean, they're old, <laughs> but they're not, they're not that old. They're not, like, um, flow old or anything. <laughs> well, some of them might be flow. No, 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 sorry. Um, they... They stepped away because they didn't want to do the Discord, and there was a kingdom ran while they were gone. And now those people who did that are now the leaders of what the kingdom is, and our old guard players can come back and just play. Um, True. I know, like, Sir Randall is a prime example of that. Like, he was there on Discord with us to give us classes and whatnot, but he comes out now, or it was coming out when we were open, every now and then. You know, if him and Sir Sane agree that they want to go out, they'll go get tacos and then they'll meet us at the field. <laughs> Fair. You know, so. How is that guy? How is Sane doing? Sane, I mean, doing pretty good. I just saw a profile pic of him. It looked like he was out for a run. Um, oh, I, no. I'm not, <laughs> oh, what? I'm not a run. Uh, it's it's moving faster on your feet than you typically would. Mm-mm. Never heard yeah, of it. it's falling. It's, it's a pain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It? Essentially, yeah. It's it's falling forward, but getting your foot there in time. Yeah, sounds dangerous. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what that's uh-huh. like. Well, he he. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a story. That, like I'm not very proud of it now because he he's rusty. <laughs> but he came back out, and um, I'm sort of boarding because I'm I'm doing my story and and scenes like this flow god right, like not flow god but. Flow yeah, yeah. God. Yeah, um, probably there too. Well, maybe. Uh, and uh, he he's just getting warmed up and he threw a shot and I threw my blade behind my back because I'm left-handed, threw the blade behind my back so it sat over my shield and got the full block and then came back through to kill him. And like I went and bragged about it. And he's like, <laughs> I, I've just started fighting again. Like, no, no, no. I know, but you're sane and I just had a sick block. I'm, I'm taking it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, it, and now I feel like a tool because, you know, I, Charles and I are friends and it's like, oh, God. No, that was but a he's sick also, block, dude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, but he's also a Packers fan and I'm a Lions fan. And oh, Packers we fan already, right here, too. Yeah. Hey, mm. Same. Call me. <laughs> yeah, how was how was this last weekend? Yeah, so I was gonna say call you so you can weep together. <laughs> hey, you know what? Last <laughs> weekend was great because we're still number one seed. How those lines <laughs> doing, man? Well, I mean, we're not the number one pick, and it's, it's better than what we were most of the year. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, one last question about the battle game stuff. Mm-hmm. Does Dragon Spine have any favored games? Like, are you a big uh, Jugging Kingdom? Are you a big Phoenix League Kingdom? Or is it really just like classic quests or, uh, or or battle game scenarios that your champion has come up with or something like that? Okay. Uh, so our largest park has Saltbox. Don't ask me to tell you what it is. Uh, <laughs> it's I go I go to Pegasus Valley and I play it. I don't understand what the setup of it is. I think it's just a square inside of a square and you just add stuff to it at that point And it's a salt box. Uh, <laughs> Dragon's final cruises does a lot of heavy object. We do a lot of ring the bell, ring the bell is probably the more popular game in dragon spine. Okay. Uh, it's super easy to put together. You can get a newbie, a bat and tell them what to do. Um, uh, but also now we, you know, you spice it up by throwing an archer in the middle and they're a turret and everyone has classes mm-hmm. now. Um, but I, I don't know, like I, I, 
we have um i guess two boats is a, a game i like where it's yeah we've you played map that out, before you map out two boats and I, I just love battle game i don't necessarily <laughs> like I, if you told me that I, well we did this so i guess it's not that far-fetched that we're gonna s- ride our boffer and throw balls through hoops to play quidditch i do it i did do it i was the monarch and i made the people do it it was yeah. <laughs> oh yeah did it, you know quidditch is like an actual sport now like there are quidditch yes, yeah. like i talked no. to people who played quidditch in knoxville and i was like oh that's a lot like amp guard and they're like what's amp guard i'm like no <laughs> you can't not know about us this is dumb <laughs> i got mad i was like you have to know this is stupid you I, look I didn't know it was a thing Duh. is it really yeah. a thing oh it's 100 percent. like they're collegiate yeah. quidditch leagues no joke mm-hmm. yep oh yeah I, I was I was in college t- 14 years ago mm-hmm. and there was a quidditch there was a quidditch team at my college yeah it's like a nationalized thing now though they That's have like a cool. board of directors and shit like yeah it's one of those <laughs> things that like I just automatically assume anybody playing that is an amp garter and then when I, when I meet people who don't know what amp guard is I'm like but how how possible <laughs> explain so, sorry this is tangent now but how do you catch the snitch? Uh, you set you you get a person with the yellow with a yellow snitch tied to them and they just run away yeah. and then five minutes later you send a person after well, them. This is that running thing again. It just is, yeah. it sounds yeah. exhausting. I've only seen it on TV, so that's yeah. running. I get it now. <laughs> yeah. Running and co- running and COVID are both very exhausting. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, no joke. So uh, actually, um, to bring us back from the tangent here, something that I can't believe we haven't discussed. Biggest change since you've been on is the probably the battle game night uh, discussion. Uh-huh. How's yeah. how is Dragon Swine taking that? Do you have any up and comers who are going to be getting the belt? Uh, what, what's that look like for you guys? Oh, we have. Uh, it well, if if the monarch was to listen to me, we have a a battle night. Uh, in the next year, we have three masters uh, in Damn. the next two years, and we have our second in our second in two and a half years. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Dragon's Fine's all ready and excited about it. There was a lot of contention down here about it being in the sword path or it being its own, and I I love the idea that people wanted it to be in the sword, but when you already have Griffin as an option. Just make Battle Night its own and bring Griffin back. Thank you. you. Know? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I've long Kodiak, said Kodiak Griffin. 2022. <laughs> 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 so you had mentioned that uh, you've seen some decline uh, at your local park. Do you mm-hmm. guys, as a, as a park, not necessarily you yourself, um, have like a plan to for growth or, or I guess uh, – it may be on pause to some degree because you guys aren't meeting, mm-hmm. but um, do you have a plan in place or, or are you guys kind of getting something together or anything like that re- recently? So we, I mean, uh, uh, Crucis has the privilege of having Dragon Spines end rain for the fall every year because we have Maze Maze. Mm-hmm. Well, tied to Maze Maze is our Renaissance Fair. Gotcha. That's in Las Cruces. So that's a big recruiting tool for us. We usually get, you know, five or 10 people that show up and at least try Amp Guard. Mm-hmm. That's really um, cool. Not being able to go to the movie theater, because that's the other big spot for us, actually, is to go do demos in front of the movie theater and hand out cards and talk to people who are going to see Spider Man and Venom and the, the Marvel movies. And you, you it, it's not there right now, right? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, what are we going to do when we open? We're probably going to just be, be beg. <laughs> Good choice. No. Good choice. Yeah. Uh, go up to like, there's a talk about moving one of our fighters practices a month to the college. Cause again, we have a college here too. So like we have all of the resources to grow again. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of who's going to do the legwork. And th- that is still up in the air. That's where we've run into it. There's a, a lot of spots that we should be at and we're just not because we have a lot of older in the game players and older players in general um, that are a little burnt out or just don't have the time to get to the places we used to. Yeah. Sure. We were hitting up one of our local game stores uh, there for quite some time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that uh, COVID caused that to kind of yeah. slow down a well, little bit again but well, that was a really good recruiting tool for us yeah we were using sci-fi city for crafting nice but lately we've been doing our fighter practices um we've we actually have two locations where we've been doing them when we tick tock between 
Um, one is at a local skate park, which I think is a super cool location because mm-hmm. it has uh, the city of Knoxville a while back now took an old baseball field that was in, in the like main city downtown and mm-hmm. built a skate park for everybody to go. And so it still has the stadium lighting and they keep it yeah. on and they nice. keep it on. So you go fight and, you know, especially this time of year where the sun goes down at four o'clock in the afternoon or whatever, <laughs> like you go fight and you've got perfect lighting. And then you also have all the skater kids who are, you know, goony as shit anyway they they love this kind of stuff they're watching us and they're like that looks kind of cool we've had a couple walk-ups just from that oh nice cool. yeah cool um but we're we've also got one other location that what we call it the chapel of wax i have no clue where it's at so it is <laughs> this is it, it is a park that used to be a uh Mental health facility, I guess. Mm-hmm. Ah, I knew it was, it was gonna on be the ground. Yeah, yeah, before uh, before they were all shut down in Tennessee uh, in the eighties or so, eighties nineties. Thanks, Reagan. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's really a thing. He declared that the mental health crisis was over, and they lost funding. So ours yeah. lasted for another maybe four years, and then it shut down. Sad, but the park was huge. I mean, this has to be. Would you guys say like? 40 acres. It's more big. I don't know if it's more or not. Yeah, I get lost huge. in it in my car. So. They, yeah. uh, instead of just letting it fall into disrepair, they turned uh, parts of the structures that were already there into other useful things. Big uh, playground area for kids, picnic area, huge walking track around Several, it. Several uh, softball, baseball diamonds. Softball, baseball diamonds. Yeah. They also put in a, a non-denominational chapel that a couple of different church ser- uh, services use, but it's all outside. It has uh, sides that can roll up and down to block the wind out, and the lights stay on. So we go in there late at night when no one else is in there, and we fight. Yeah, literal chapel of wax. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's it sounds like all you guys need to do for recruiting is find a place that is now something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. You'll be in perfect spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wish that it, we would we could use the uh, the chapel for recruiting as well, but it turns out that no one wants to wander like a mile and a half down windy roads into the middle of this park yeah, at about eleven at night. It's been weird. Yeah. It's almost <laughs> yeah, too it's strange. Big. Yeah. Strange. And then the people that do come up aren't really people that we want playing Ampguard for some reason. <laughs> yeah. They're mostly rats, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun, oh, Ratatouille. No, but but holding your fighter practice in different locations though can be a pretty pretty big boon to your park. You can definitely get a lot more attention that way. It's, it's a very long way of getting around to that being my initial point. Uh, as is, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the did you guys do any nightings? over the course of the not meeting in person stuff. Did you have any virtual nightings or anything like that? No, I actually, the only candidate that was up for nighting while I was in office uh, asked kindly that we not, uh, we not do it. Uh, We did. I mean, we got to experience some because the burning lands is so close. So we got to see Sir Manthax get knighted. Uh, But no, uh, we 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 had the one candidate, which was the problem. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw what was going on on Godric's show yesterday, but Dragonspine had like a seven year gap where we weren't filling high end awards, mm-hmm. and so we didn't have people tonight. So we actually had uh, someone that we could like night and COVID. You know? Oh man! No, I actually this is not a joke. I did not know that you had just recently been on Godric's show. Has that come out now? Has that been posted? I, so I just, it's weird. It's, <laughs> this is the week for me. I just did the recording for it yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when you reached out and you're like, hey, do you want to come back on? I was like, I'm doing the circuit. It's the, yeah, it's the Kodiak <laughs> Media Tour. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I, so I didn't realize when I had asked you that you had done the recording with uh, Godric. And I, so this may date this. If, if you haven't seen the one, please go over to Godric's channel and watch his uh, thing there too. Uh, we ask better questions, but that's okay. <laughs> the, but uh, sorry, Godric. He the, makes better belts though. He does make <laughs> yeah, better he does. belts. The, uh, by the way, get, let's, put, let's drop a link to some of Godric's stuff uh, in the, the Facebook group too. Man, yeah, he's a good guy. Um, the, but I was talking to him about something different. I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna, we're finally gonna get Kodiak back on. We've been talking about doing it for like, I don't know, nine, nine to ten uh, months now." He's like, "Oh, I just now did a recording with that guy." <laughs> like, no, oh, oh well. <laughs> 
You're just it, it feels feels good to be wanted. Yeah, you're just right? too popular. That's what <laughs> yes. it is. <laughs> so no virtual nightings at all. Did did the kingdom have any virtual ceremonies or anything like that? Is this where some of those high level words were being given out? Yeah. So we definitely did. We still did end rain and mid rain uh, benefit to the kingdom is since I do KOK, okay, I paid for the zoom. So nice. like I can host, I host most of, or I have been hosting most of the kingdoms online stuff, um, which makes me very important to the kingdom. So, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we, we, we did all the awards. We did transitions, uh, but there's, it, we got to maze maze this year and did all of it in person and, it just feels different. Like Sir Francis still did all of his heraldry stuff where he yeah. labeled every single title that you have and for every single person, which, you know, makes it go for an extra 40 minutes, but <laughs> um, doing it online, everyone's just like, Oh, you know, so <laughs> yeah, we definitely, we, we definitely did our end rains and mid rains online. Nice. Yeah. Good. I, I had plenty of those, too. We actually had, uh, at least, because I know we were both monarchs during COVID, I had four, maybe five uh, people that were ready to be knighted that not one of them wanted to do it virtually. Yeah. And I was like, come on, yeah. like I'll hop on your World of Warcraft server and we'll do this bad boy. Like, let's go, you know? And they're like, nah, I want to wait. I'm like, fuck. But I understand. Are you going to do a World of Warcraft knighting? Because... I just canceled my subscription, but that sounds amazing. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, it'd be a Final Fantasy XIV knighting, but I'm down. Like, you know, <laughs> Ooh, okay. Holla All at right. your boy. Like, <laughs> a lot of, lot of level one Final Fantasy XIV characters standing there for that night. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. <laughs> why Why did we do this knighting in Limsa Lumims? <laughs> I needed everyone to be naked, and I didn't need it to be weird. <laughs> Girl, same. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's actually one of the things that surprised me didn't happen was that like for all the things that Amthgard could have done go like forming one giant dragon spine world of warcraft guild like makes the most sense and no one did it well retail well, is trash so yeah like I, I mean also blizzard did light itself on fire over the past year and a yeah. half so like understandable but like games in general did, mm -hmm. so it, we tried. Oh, there, was, okay. there was there oh, was there was five of tell. us that were trying a World of Warcraft, but much like any time you organize a five people to do anything, I would get on for two hours and no one else would be on, and then I'd be like, "Well, I have I have done all the mining that I would want to do for a lifetime because I've been waiting for people to show up, <laughs> yep. and I would just about to hit quit, and then someone would show up, and I'd be like, "Well." I've got to be up at six to go teach children and it's yeah. now 1 a.m. and I, I hate you. Yeah. Um, and then other groups have like, there's a whole bunch of D and D groups in dragon's fine. Yeah. That's that's we had a bunch of D and D groups pop up here as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, just not world of Warcraft. It just, did you did you have any other uh, online games that you do any Minecraft servers that the kingdom was sponsoring or anything like that? Was there so, a kingdom uh, that had that that had a Minecraft server and a bunch of shit happened and somebody got banned Rising over it? Wins or Taldegore, one of the two of those. Yeah, yeah I don't like Rising Winds. Okay, well, we had some players who ran Minecraft servers that invited people into them. We had uh, we we played a lot of Among Us. I know you guys had mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, but it really got down to when it got to brass tacks on like what people wanted to do. They wanted to role play something. Yeah. So I, I ran a text based RPG on our Discord, and then that turned That's into really a cool. DB group. It it was it was pretty cool because I had players that were reaching out, being like, "I, you have me immersed, and I don't know what to do with it, so I have to talk to you." And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm sorry, we're not allowed to talk. You need to. It's text only." And it, you know, so I would get I would get phone calls or, or Facebook messages later being like, if if you only typed everything instead of speaking, we would Dragon's Fine could be totally RP. But you know, I open my mouth. So that becomes a problem. My, my responses are limited. You must ask the right, the right question. questions. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. I hadn't thought about that. A text based RPG would be pretty cool. And there's a lot of Discord servers that have some kind of UF8 channel like that where they're doing a text based RPG of some kind. No. Emoji based RPG. 
<laughs> go Only home. Only emojis. Go home. Ooh. Oh, it's going to turn into ERP so fast. Never mind. <laughs> We okay. could check on the emoji roleplay channel. That is a lot of eggplants. <laughs> wow, I'm gonna that leave is a lot the server. Eggplants. I gotta go. All right, my idea is bad. Never mind. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's bad, and you should feel bad. <laughs> I, I would say that he's gonna edit this part out, but he won't. No, 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 no. I want to see if someone does it. <laughs> now, this, this is gonna go into the intro now. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. yeah. Right. God, I need to rework that. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, so. The uh, the thanks for the uh, 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 for going a little bit off of uh, uh, some of the leadership stuff that we were talking about and just kind of talking about the kingdom stuff too. I I think that getting back to a sense of normality and being able to talk about stuff like this, even in situations where we can't do it, is uh, is fun. I want to ask you one last question along that line. Once everything does open back up, mm-hmm. which uh, it, it is at the time of this recording. It's close to uh, end of January, something like that. It may be a very long time before that comes, but once it does, anyone visiting your kingdom, if they can only hit up one event there, what event should they hit up? It's got to be the maze maze, right? I think that was well, the, the answer last time. <laughs> yeah. So if it, if it's in uh, November, it's maze maze. If it's in the other end of the year, currently. Uh, the reason why Deverick and I are going to this Alliance event is so that I can steal all of the RP ideas because I am going to put a concerted effort into trying to get a two or three day RP. Like you cross a threshold, you must be in character amp guard event uh, in Dragon's Spine, hopefully somewhere between the Arizona and New Mexico border so that all of our players have access to it. Um, there is a lot of comments coming from well my roommate he's not here Deverick, uh <laughs> that it's going to be lumpy lair to electric boogaloo because we've already <laughs> done nice lumpy lair for, as a fundraiser um and if you can't get to that if you go to any one of our end rains or mid rains and you just you want to fit in you we we have a fighter's pit that just occurs wherever there's people and then we have a social circle of these people who want to talk about how old game has become new game. And we got people running into fields and uh, yeah, everything. It, you can just come to an end rain or mid rain and have just as much fun as you would as if it was a like full fledged multiple day event, right? Like it should be that way in my opinion, but you, you get that. Uh, we just, Everyone wants to have a good time. Everyone puts their grudges away for mid rain and end rain because typically it's there's something big that's going to happen at these events, and we just know, you know, like I say it a lot on my show. It's it's not about me. There's a lot of that in Dragon's Spine where it's like, okay, I'm not seeing eye to eye with this people or this park or whatever, but you know, uh, Xander the Reaper is getting his sword belt, and it's going to be the first sword belt in Dragon's Spine in seven years. Hell yeah! Like. So Maze Maze came along and people who have won't speak words to each other in any other time are like, hey, like, I'm going to go battle game with you. We're going to be a team because, you know, because Xander's here, you know, because That's really cool. Yeah. 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 It, it, it felt really good. Like I, I cooked a feast that was cold when we served it. Uh Oh, I ran a battle games that everyone got like I, I felt really proud about that because I was really down about the food uh, as well Jade <laughs> came out of retirement to come to this nighting because she's a knight and she's my like inspiration as far as nights go and she had a cold barbecue dinner <laughs> and I was like mm. but then I ran the battle games and everyone had a great time with those so uh, and it was all for it was it was all centered around the idea of like this guy that we knew should be a knight is getting knighted and it, it just, everyone turned up, everyone turned out, and yeah, it was a good time. That's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. I've never experienced that the case. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> no, we, uh, our first event back was kind of like that too. We had, it was a good time. We had uh, some people visit, which was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I think that everybody was just happy to be able to go out and play uh, again, yeah, know? absolutely. That's that's that was the big vibe that I caught 
you know, I didn't actually get to play as much as I wanted to, but that was 100% what was going on. Because he's our monarch now. Yeah. He's <laughs> gross. Oh, You're yeah. disgusting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's you know, it's cool that everyone on the call here has been a, a monarch at some point, so we all kind of oh what, no, what that's Jeff's not true through. at all in there, Flo. Ooh. <laughs> oh, you think someone would do that? Just go on a podcast and tell lies? <laughs> I've never lied. No, not one. <laughs> I have. I've bragged about the fact that I was never a monarch. You as a matter of fact, so proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> you, I swear to God, you got like Indiana Jones sliding under the door, and you reach back and grab your belt and pull it through it to <laughs> before they add those in, dude. You, yes. yeah. <laughs> Quality move. <laughs> so, uh, I want to ask you, as tradition towards the uh, end of the show, uh, I know we that I did an hour. Fuck me, we have. Yeah, we are. Yeah. It's a yeah. we're we're not at the end yet, but we're starting to get there. And so, I didn't uh, I, I didn't uh, tell you this when we were asking you if you wanted to come back on, uh, but I hope you remember. We always ask for a funny story or something like that. Mm-hmm. we've been mostly not meeting. Um, so there might not be a whole lot of new stories, but uh, do you have a funny story for us? Or short of that, do you have a really cool story that happened from the one in-person event that you guys had? Oh, <laughs> man. Uh, it's, it's I want to tell two. I want to I wanna tell one funny story that happened, and then I want to tell one story from the event because it's why this is... Got this it. is part of the garb now, guys. This okay. is not I was, just me trying to while out. This is <laughs> this is garb now. Okay, I was curious, um, so please, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna start with uh, me, Stillhead, and Deverick. Um, and I'm sure other no, me, Stillhead, and Deverick are driving to Yuma because not only have we not seen Kenjin in person for over a year, but we're going down as three members of the order of the ash and we're about to bring him into our t- and into our family nice wow. and deverick and i are notorious roasters especially on car rides and stillhead is notorious for telling us how often she knows stuff about japan <laughs> well <laughs> why why fuck off don't look at me like that <laughs> in, in an eight hour trip at about hour three <laughs> It got to the point where now the thing was I would start doing this and go, I'm the queen of Japan. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. So we roasted her for the five hours there and then the eight <laughs> hours back. And uh, she was the queen of Dragon's Spine at that point, too. So, she, you know, she got this unique title of queen of Japan just from driving with me and Deverick to uh, Yuma. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No, it, don't look at me like that. Oh, I, just, yeah. The vibe in the just studio. Just a silly stuck. story. <laughs> but the cool story for me, and I, I very rarely try to make them about me because, again, fighting ego versus self hatred. Tell a story about which you. one wins. Yeah. We want to hear it. Um, this. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Still had did uh, Naruto Rain, and I was the leader of the Sand Village. We broke our teams, we broke them all down into the villages and in the in the world. And I went to her and I said, listen, I, you don't have to give me anything. But if I'm if if there's anything I could ask for that I would self promote for an award is I want the title Monster of the Sand. OK. And she's like, OK, why? And I'm like, because I am the leader of the Sand Village. Gara is one of my favorite characters. And I like. I've put a lot of energy into this rain because I'm super pumped for for the rain. Mm-hmm. Well, we get to end rain, and I'm on her team, so she's not telling me any of the stuff that's going my way, right? Like, but I'm on her monarch team, so I know about everyone else's awards. Mm-hmm. And she calls me up for my masterhood, and I'm standing as her champion at the time. And she gives me my hood, and she gives me the the um, the scroll. Right, and I'm just I'm lost in the moment, right? Like I I, I wear this now. This is look at this, yeah, Ooh, nice. super cool. Um, Dame Cat from Burning Lands made this for me. She knew my favorite colors, uh, and she's like, I can make it orange and yellow, and it'll it'll make sense. Um, well, court ends, and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm Master Crown. Everyone's high fiving and stuff. Dot uh, Xander's a knight now. There's five new masters. And I'm, I'm like, oh, I got to get everyone ready for battle games. 
and still ha- runs up to me with this. And she goes, shit, I forgot to tell you that you're the monster of the sand. Congratulations. And runs away. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, so I turn around in my new master hood in my, uh, I, I believe I was wearing this, my orange tunic with the maze on the back. Mm-hmm. And I put my, my headband on and I go rush Deverick. And I almost run him into the maze <laughs> when I give him a hug. And I'm like, I'm the man, I, I'm the master of the sand. I'm the master of the sand. He's like, you're also a master crown. And I'm like, there's. 1A, 1B, and I don't know which one's more important. <laughs> so that's why I sign off now as Master Crown and Monster of the Sand for my post because, like, I wanted it. Mm-hmm. And she, like, she's like, I forgot to give it to you during court. And yeah, she just <laughs> kind of threw a, a, a headband at me and ran away. It was super awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that's Loved good. It. That's yeah. fantastic. I think that custom awards like that are, uh, are really cool. Mm-hmm. I think they can add a, a, a whole lot. Well, and I mean, as as sort of demonstrated, they can be just as important as some of the bigger real awards in our, you Absolutely, know, the, the yeah. masterhoods and everything else. If it's important to the person, it's important. So the monarch before I started in, as monarch in Dragonspine, Balder, was doing challenges and gave away the title Artificer. Okay. Artificer is my favorite D&D class. I just, for the first time three weeks ago, got to finally play an Artificer. But it was a title that if I had known he was giving away, I, I would have been hunting for it. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> because, you know, Lord Baron, Grand Duke, Kodiak, Monster of the Sand, and Artificer, or something of that variation. Yeah. That's, I need nothing more in life. I have <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah. No, that's perfect. Well, really, uh, that's cool, man. Uh, so... First, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show again. Yeah. Uh, we joked around about it when we started, but we really have been missing you. Um, oh. Second, um, we, I think, talked about this at the beginning of the show, too. That was weeks ago. We were partying. We were partying. Um, <laughs> but uh, give us a hype for your show uh, real quick. Okay. For those, okay. Pretend people haven't seen it before. Okay. So I do a show called Kingdom of Kodiak on Wednesdays at 7 Mountain Standard Time. Uh, mountain time. Uh, I bring on guests and ask them non-traditional amp card questions along with some traditional amp card questions to bring some levity to the game that we all love um i try to get as wide of a populace into the the questions as i can and as the as long as well as uh interviewees um it kok is uh, streamed on Facebook, but it can now also be found on YouTube. Uh, one of my dear friends in uh, Dragon's Fine Yang, the Merciful, has edited intros and outros to every episode and uploaded them for no cost, just wanting to make sure that it was something that the people could have. Um, and if you're interested in maybe not the most formal way of getting questions <laughs> asked, then you should go check it out. Uh, Tomorrow will be my 92nd episode of Kingdom of Kodiak. We're, we're, we're creeping up on 100 real quick, and I'm mind blown. Yeah, I, anything, I don't know what to do with it. You got anything special planned for 100? Oh, man, I was thinking about retiring at 100. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> Guys, hey, I just had an idea for our 100th episode. Uh, is it retire? Yeah. No. <laughs> Dang. Uh, so uh, there was... There was talk to bringing my entire circle of knights on. Uh, a lot of people who have been on the show have asked if maybe I could bring a bunch of them on all at once. Uh, there was the, I don't know if they're going to want to do it now because I've been interviewed back to back days, but there were people that were like, Hey, the first time you went on your own show, you were, we did a roast of you. Uh, you never actually got to answer the questions. And like, <laughs> And I was like, well, I did because I'm better at talking than you two are. But, you know, um, Devrick, Beatrix, shots fired, but uh, I did answer the questions. Uh, so maybe that, I don't know. Like, uh, ideally, uh, I would be able to talk people out of retirement to come do the, the 100th episode so that it would be, you know, I've gotten Goldcrest on, I've gotten Sir Glenn on, you guys have been on, Godric's been on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've had. Uh, Sir Randall, Sir Francis, and, and Cash, Pumpkin Jack, some of uh, Sir oh, Tristan, man. some of my people, the the people that I've looked up to who have become friends throughout 
my time in amp guard and it's like oh i, I gotta can i get agile jade out of retirement to do an episode if i did <laughs> 100 would probably be the place to put her right yeah, like yeah you're the reason that i am the person i am in amp guard you may not know that through and through because you think I'm an asshole at times, but you know, uh, and then, you know, if we get to a hundred, we got to talk about what two fifty seven at that point. Cause I got to beat out supernatural. Yep. Ah, okay. Yeah. And then after that, you got four twenty. I guess is the next, <laughs> it's going to be a tough you know, one. It, Hey, if you want to come on Kingdom of Kodiak, uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently I've signed up for the next couple of years. Welcome, welcome to the cool Kingdom of Kodiak. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't have anything lined up for 100, I can absolutely wax poetic for an hour. I have a PowerPoint presentation about how a taco is a sandwich. Nothing from the peanut gallery. Hey. I could go for an hour. I'm just saying I have the presentation ready to go. Well, I, I haven't done you guys the justice of having you on individually. Like ah, getting damn. you on all together and making you fight was was <laughs> precious to me. But being, able, being able to bring you each on and kind of pick each of your brains individually and see, you know, if if uh, Cabbage and Teflon have separate brains at this point. <laughs> That's a good question. I don't yeah. know if we do. They're, the upsetting they part. are so dangerously in the drift. Yeah. <laughs> like we, it, it is scary to play disc golf with us sometimes. <laughs> it's scary to go eat with us. This dude knew I wanted an apple turnover today, and he just brought me one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just happened. He was like, here you go. Listen, if you're not already married, or maybe you're in a state where you can marry again. Her, her man would never let that happen. <laughs> okay. Well, Kodiak, thank you so much for coming on. We will definitely link your YouTube in the descriptions uh, below. Um, the If uh, you haven't already, tune in at 7 Mountain Time on Wednesdays for Kingdom of Kodiak. Uh, and definitely go check his YouTube channel out that has all of those old episodes. Not just because we're on it, but mainly because we're on it. <laughs> <laughs> also because this show's really cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Awesome, thank you guys. Uh, if you don't mind, I plug a couple of things real quick. Oh, absolutely, go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, Dragonspine has a red bubble right now where you can get some of our local parks and uh, households and fighting companies' heraldries put on a whole bunch of different stuff, including Kingdom of Kodiak merch. Ooh, so oh, nice. if you're looking for a bear oh. with a microphone Ooh, and uh, you are, well, <laughs> Redbubble has it. Also, um, our kingdom is doing a fundraiser for our coffers, of course. And uh, I, I, I've said it twice during this show. Maybe it's lost a little bit of it. But if you remember, I, I shaved my beard for St. Jude's. Well, now I'm willing to cut off the ponytail for dragon spine um Deverick has agreed to sharpen one of his swords and cut it off live oh wow but we need to get to a goal currently i'm doing the one chip challenge the hot sauce challenge uh ice bucket pie in the face wearing crocs to the next five kingdom events and the <laughs> populace gets to pick what those colors are oh, so nice. Yeah, wearing Crocs to the next five events is just called flow going to the yeah, next five I was events. Say, that's just how flow plays amp guard. I don't understand. Yeah, well, there's only one Croc wearing amp guard in Dragon's Spine, and that are, that's our current king. So uh, by royal decree, everyone must be at risk of wearing Crocs. So you might be best friends. Who knows, Flow? I don't. Know. That's cool. Where can people go to uh, to donate to these things or see them? Could we link to the Dragon Spine page, or is there a different yeah. page? So you go to the Dragon Spine page, and that's where the um, the Red Bubble and the um, Coffer fundraiser are both at. You can send uh, for either. Well, no, for the uh, fundraiser, you can just send it to the DS's PayPal, ampguard.ds at gmail.com or something to that effect. And for Red Bubble, it'll link you straight to the 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 site. What's the goal to get the ponytail con? I'm just curious. <laughs> well, okay. We, we got so, that Patreon money now, so I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, oh, you got Patreon money? Got Patreon. Yeah, we started a Patreon. Hey, by the way, thank you so much to everyone that's already subscribed to our yeah, Patreon. No For those that haven't, uh, there will be information in the bottom of this video on how you can subscribe. Uh, and as always, 
Uh, in the process of cutting that ponytail off, remember to also God. chop our like and subscribe button. Shut it really up. does help us with God. with the algorithm that we're not actually a part of because YouTube won't monetize us with all of our you cussing. You know and- when you're about to do it. I swear to God, it sneaks up on me. Oh, uh, so the, uh, when I shaved the beard, I, I think I set it for something really low. I think I went 50 or was I 500? So I was somewhere you were in there. 500. You were 500, yeah. I was 500. Well, okay. So for the hair is it? I will cut the ponytail at 300. Um, currently, my team has $45, I think, to mm-hmm. our name. So there's a lot of room there, and I, I I will keep growing it. I'm not like I will take it down. It's damn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been I've been growing it for two and a half years, guys. So if I'm willing, but I'm willing to put it up if the numbers get there. Look at my hair's all messed up now. Chop it, <laughs> donate it to, to what is it? Locks of Love. Is that the good one? There's one of those that's actually really bad. So to, to, to figure yeah. it out. <laughs> yeah, but that, I mean that's probably where it'll go, right? Like I'll get it cut, and then we'll just make sure that it's all taken care of mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, shipped out. But yeah, for three hundred dollars, it'll be done live with a sword. You know. And... <laughs> Good that, luck I don't with know. That. Yeah, that, yeah, I don't know how don't much more. It was. That, that sounds scary. Can I just <laughs> like you said no. it earlier? And I didn't want to say anything, but it sounds really scary. Like there's no way, <laughs> no way that I would let either of these chuckle fucks over here <laughs> cut my hair with scissors, let alone a sword <laughs> that they had sharpened on a rock that they found in the yard or something. Oh, <laughs> Where's the knife oh, around yeah, here? No, we don't have the yeah, legacy yeah. sword anymore. You took away all the blades, you bastard. <laughs> I mean. It, Flo, if it wasn't for the fact that you're already so well known, I would say that's why people won't remember your name. But, <laughs> like, it's that stuff you gotta take. Like, you're already like, you know. So he's Flo. Yeah, you're Flo. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't say those three letters and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, links will be in the description down below. I'll make sure to link to the Redbubble, to the uh, to the uh, fundraiser, to Kingdom mm-hmm. of Kodiak's YouTube channel, and the Facebook and everything else. And then we'll also link to our Patreon as well. Is there we, anything else I'm forgetting here? Uh, I guess uh, for those who are potentially coming to the Winter's Edge uh, February mid uh Godric is uh, also doing belts for sale. And I think I don't remember the. I think it's first event or something like that. Is the the code for it in his etsy shop okay um so oh yeah he's that. offering a discount uh for people that yes. go and get his belt so if you haven't got a godric belt before um first event is the... i think that's what it is okay hey godric when you listen to this you need to make it first event because <laughs> if it's not we, we fucked, fucked up really bad. Bad. <laughs> real weird listen <laughs> yeah uh, that actually reminds me of something, though. Godric and I talked about this yesterday. You guys wouldn't know because it's not until Sunday that it goes up. <laughs> You're not cooler. Uh, well, oh, you wait, know. This like, goes up Sunday? Yes, ours comes <laughs> up yeah. first. <laughs> uh, he, both of us agreed that uh, him and I, the three of you, and Hogman should find an event we could all go to and oh, do yeah. a live six person host. Maybe an ALU video, but like. Hey, yeah. Also, maybe we just roast somebody. I'm a hundred percent. I can. We're hundred like percent down. Bitches. Not only that, but our setup here, which you kind of see over in the corner, we can actually hold six mics. Yep. Nice. Yeah. I, that's. <laughs> this is I'm a very so expensive dangerous. thing to be just tipping over. Yeah, I, I should. Not. But yeah, no, that sounds that sounds awesome. And uh, for anyone that hasn't turned this off at this point, we will put what the code is down in there instead for sure, of just yeah. guessing. Just guessing it. <laughs> but. If you we'll, we'll link to Godric's uh, website. He's a really cool guy. He makes amazing belts. It's one of the reasons that he was knighted. And there's going to be a discount uh, code in there for it. So and you can't buy anything at the mid range because of uh, site rules. Site rules. So we can deliver things, and that's what he's working with. Yeah, buy before it get delivered at the event. Yep. Is, I think the, the deal. Hey, thank you so much, Kodiak, and we look forward yeah. to see to saying that we want to have you on for another year, and then getting you on after that. <laughs> yeah. It's fair. Yeah. I can't wait. We'll see. How, you know, maybe maybe by then the hair will have been cut, and uh, you know, other things like will have me. changed. Well, when you're, I think what we do is when you're <laughs> Sir Kodiak, we bring you back on, and then it's like, oh, we, yeah. we do the Kodiak milestones, right? That's yeah. How there okay. we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, I'll sign me up. You guys may be waiting a while. There's a lot of great candidates before I would, uh, I'd be up. Well, at least I think that's the way. But no, <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> All right. 
Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe to our podcast on YouTube or Spotify to get notified about new episodes. And make sure to follow us on Facebook for announcements and more.